This Chromebook excels at almost everything. Design is a high point, and apart from a few other examples like the Pixel or HP Chromebook 13 G1, this device stands out as a quality slab of all aluminum. If you've handled a newer MacBook Pro, you have an idea of what we're talking about here. Soft touch aluminum, rounded corners, and straight boxy sides all come together to make a slim, attractive design. At around two and a half pounds, it's also supremely portable. The hinge is firm and bends around 360 degrees to go into all the standard modes we've all become used to at this point. This one does so without too much wobble and has a satisfying magnetic clasp that holds the screen to the body when it's in tablet mode. Firm, light, thin and attractive, ASUS couldn't have done this any better. While Apple is taking most of the heat for ditching standard USB ports, we're beginning to see more Chromebooks go this route as well. This and Samsung's latest offering both ditch standard ports in favor of USB Type-C and I can't really complain. The truth is, it has to happen eventually. USB-C gives us slimmer devices and single access ports that can do just about anything. On the ASUS Flip, we have the USB-C on each side, a micro SD card slot, and a headphone microphone jack. With the addition of side firing speaker ports, volume rocker, and a power button, this is about all we have to look at here. The bottom is solid with a few screws and feet. As the Core M chips don't need fans, there are also no fan ports here. I personally keep a USB-C to HDMI adapter in my bag if I need it, but as you can see in a video we've done before, docking ports work perfectly well with Chromebooks, so a single USB-C port can do everything you need with one simple dock. The days are coming when we won't need adapters, and I'm all for it. It is time to march forward with USB-C. Additionally, the fact that this Chromebook charges over USB-C also provides me with a single charging source in my bag for both my phone and my Chromebook, and, well, any other USB Type-C device that I have with me. It's very convenient, and it's nice to know that with one charging adapter, I can make sure to power up anything that I've got with me. I was a little hesitant when the initial specs leaked out that this device was equipped with a 1080p screen. I've talked a lot about 1080p screens, but with the scaling options available at the 1536 by 864 resolution, which this device comes out of the box with, I can say that 1080p screens are all right with me. This screen, with 300 nits of brightness, wide viewing angles, IPS classification, and punchy colors, is a pleasure to look at. No angle is wrong. The items on the screen scale perfectly with the 12 and a half inch diagonal measure, and it makes everything super simple to work with. With that scaling, we also see a bit more crispness to the fonts and icons as well, leaving every person who has touched this device to comment how good this screen actually is. Additionally, the win with 1080p is performance versus the Samsung at 2400 by 1600 pixels. The 1920 by 1080 on the ASUS presents the OS with far fewer pixels to render all the time. This increases performance and makes everything move faster across the board. Now I do enjoy 3x2 displays, like the Pixel and the upcoming Samsung Chromebook Plus, but the trade-off in performance has to be factored in here. Comparing similar internals, the ASUS will win in everyday speed every time because of this. But for that win, ASUS takes a hit when we talk about tablet mode. With Android apps coming in a few weeks, that's something we need to consider. 16x9 screens are simply awkward in tablet mode, too wide in landscape and too narrow in portrait. There's no fixing that, but if the convertible stuff is just cream on the top for you as a user, this is really a non-issue. The tent and presentation modes are still helpful and work well with this device. I just couldn't get a tablet mode to feel comfortable. As I said, the knocks I have with this device are small. The keyboard and trackpad combo is another huge win for ASUS here. Starting with the keyboard, I can say it is my favorite so far among Chromebooks. I'm no aficionado, but I don't recall a keyboard I've enjoyed this much since the Pixel LS. Travel is great, the sound is satisfying, and the backlight with six stages is fantastic. I love it. The trackpad, while I can't verify the material it's made of, is smooth and responsive. Oils don't build up quickly, and the size of it, it's perfect. The click mechanism on all three units I've had time with are all great. Great travel, great click, and there aren't any odd or loose parts. It just adds to the overall quality and feel of this Chromebook. The only trackpad I've ever used that's as good is on the Chromebook Pixel. Are you seeing a pattern here? Battery life has also been exceptional. We're seeing anywhere between 8 and 10 hours of use every time we charge this thing up. And that's with screen brightness around 75%. There's no doubt this thing is a great performer and it's great on battery as well. With a Pentium, Core M3, and Core M7 slated to arrive, there are differing versions that will be available. Right now, the one that's available through most channels is the Core M3 with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. This all comes in at $499, and for whatever reason, the Pentium version is only being sold at Best Buy right now for the same $499 with only 32 gigs of internal storage. There's no way that purchase makes any sense right now. For the same money, you're getting a processor that scores consistently around 21,000 to 23,000 on Octane, 
Google's JavaScript benchmark versus the 14,000 or 15,000 on the Pentium model. Granted, we spent a good bit of time with the Pentium version and the performance has actually been really great. However, if you can get a huge bump in speed and twice the storage for exactly the same price, why wouldn't you do that? With the M3 and four gigs of RAM, this thing simply flies. No slowdowns, no lag. It's a little beast. We'll likely only see the eight gig version paired up with a Core M7 processor, but there may end up being an M3 eight gig variant down the road. For now, I just don't see the need for 99% of our users. Four gigs of RAM paired up with the M3 performs exceptionally well. And Android apps have run well across the board as well in the beta channel for right now. And I'm not seeing any issues with the Intel processors in this regard.